Hi everyone. Uh, we're going to start a little series. Um, we're going to title it Worship. What is it? And we're going to learn about worship in the Bible and what it truly is. We, um, as we grow in our Christian life, we can get a lot of misconceptions about worship is what worship is. And sometimes we can think that worship is just that, you know, 20 or 30 minutes on Sunday morning where uh, a worship team comes out and we all sing songs or and we think that that's what worship is, but the Bible has so much more to say about it and what actually worship is. So we're going to learn about that in this little series. So I'm going to um, use, of course, the Bible to teach, and I'm also going to um, use some things from some books that I've read. And I'm going to, if you're interested in it, there's um, they're all by the same author. His name is, name is Tom Crater. The first one is uh, Worship in Heaven. And why on earth it matters and um, I sent everybody an email um, with a link to these books and I'll put it uh, below these videos too the second one is worship is what and the third one is becoming a true worshiper and these books are all really really good so um, if you're interested in further study I just suggest that you um, get one or all of those books. They're really, really good. So when we're talking about worship, I guess the first thing to do is really uh, think about what the word worship really means. And it means to ascribe uh, worth to something, to pay homage, to reverence, to venerate, to adore. It is the creature honoring the creator. So we find in the Bible that in the Christian's life that worship or honoring the creature, honoring the creator is very, very, very important. So I'm going to go uh, through eight reasons why it's so important that we worship and, and things that the Bible say uh, are ways that the Bible say that worship is so, so important. So um, the first thing is our main purpose in life is to worship the Lord. Our main goal or main instruction in life is to worship the Lord. Um, if you all remember the story of Moses going up on the mountain, getting the, the commandments from the Lord, and he got lots and lots of commandments and instructions, but a lot of times we think of the Ten Commandments or the commandments or the, that were the most important and did you know that the first four of those Ten Commandments, or 40% of the Ten Commandments, had to do with worshiping the Lord? So the first one had to do with worshiping no other gods. The second one had to do with having no idols, only worshiping the Lord. The third one had to do with not misusing His name. In other words, His name is so holy and so wonderful and to be so reverenced that we should never misuse the name of God. It's so to be worshiped and honored. And the fourth commandment is that his Sabbath day is to be kept holy unto the Lord. So those first four commandments all have to do with worshiping and honoring the Lord. So the very first thing is our main purpose, our main goal, our main commandments in life have to do with worshiping God. The second thing is in the Old Testament, when they set, set up camp, the tabernacle where they worshiped was to be set in the very middle of the camp. In other words, the worship of, of the Lord was to be the very center of their lives, of the Israelites' lives. And I thought that was very, very neat. Uh, the third thing, important point or thing to think about is the very reason that uh, Pharaoh was told to let God's people go was so that they could worship him. You know, a lot of times we think, well, you know, God told, wanted, you know, his people to be let go so they could be free, so they could not be slaves anymore, so they could have their own land, so they could do this, that, or the other. But the main reason that uh, God wanted his people to be free of Egyptian bondage was so that they could worship him. In Exodus 7, verse 16, um, Moses is told what to say to Pharaoh. And it says, Then say to him, Pharaoh, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to say to you, Let my people go, 
so that they may worship me in the desert. Isn't that awesome? So that all of the, the whole story of Exodus has to do with how important it is to let God's people go worship him. Number four, when Jesus gave his, his disciples instructions on praying, the very first line, the very first sentence has to do with worship. It says in, in Matthew 6, 9, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Or in other words, your name is to be reverenced. Your name is holy. Your name is to be honored. It had to do with worship. So as we approach God in prayer, we're to worship him. So in prayer, worship is the most important thing. Number five, we exist to proclaim God's praises. In 1 Peter 2, 9, it says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So God has chosen us. As a royal priesthood, he's chosen us. The main purpose in each, he's chosen us is so that we could proclaim his praises, declare his praises. Isn't that awesome? So we're here to proclaim the praises of God and to worship him. Number six, when we get to heaven, our main activity is going to be worshiping God. In Revelation 15, verse 2, I'm going to read this to you. It says, And I saw what looked like a sea of glass mixed with fire, and standing beside the sea, those who had been victorious over the beast and his image and over the number of his name. They held harps given them by God and sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Now they're singing this in worship to God. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the ages. Who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. So in heaven we find, you know, on earth we're supposed to be worshiping the Lord. That's our purpose on earth. But when we get to heaven, that's the activity we're going to be most occupied with in heaven is to worship the Lord. Worship Number seven, worship is so vital and so important that that's the last thing that Satan tempted Jesus with when he was in the desert. Um, you know, in, in this life, we, we are tempted to worship many things and many people besides the Lord. And Jesus was also tempted with that. And we think, oh, that, that wasn't really a temptation for Jesus. He would never be tempted with that. Well, if he couldn't be tempted with it, it wouldn't be called a temptation. And it was a severe temptation. Um, if it wouldn't have been a severe temptation, then it wouldn't have been called a temptation for Jesus. So Satan wants to keep us distracted and busy and in love with other things uh, besides the Lord Jesus. In Matthew 4, verse 8, it says, Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So God wants our worship. He wants us to worship him and worship him only. Number eight on our list. And this is the last one. <laughs> we are commanded to worship. In Psalm 29, 2, it says, Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, in holy array. And in Psalm 96, 9, it says, Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before and reverently fear him all the earth. So we're commanded, as Christians, we're commanded to worship the Lord. 
And so it's part of a Christian's life to give him honor, to give him reverence, to honor him and reverence him and love on him and adore him and give him all, all that's due him. And so we think about, well, what, what exactly is worship? And um, many times we're not really, you know, exactly sure what it is. So I'm going to first talk about what worship is not. Um, worship is not something that, it's not a worship service that is here to honor and to please us. And many times we think a worship service is something that we're to go to and it's supposed to make us happy. And that's not worship. It's not for us. It's not gauged. Worship is not gauged by how we feel or how we feel it went or if we sensed something or if we felt something. Worship is not about a show. It's not just 30 minutes on a Sunday morning. It's not Christian TV or radio or YouTube. It's not the coolest worship band or it's not old hymns or gospel music. It's not about technology or smoke machines or video backgrounds or light shows or fancy instrumentals. It's not about cool worship leaders or who dress just right or have the right hair or the right talk or who can jump and dance while playing int intric intricate instrumental solos. And worship is not about self-fulfillment. A true worshiper of God never, ever, 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 ever says, I didn't get much out of worship. Never, ever. What worship is, worship, uh, the word worship is what's called a transitive verb. It requires an action and it requires an object of that action. In other words, I threw needs, I threw the ball. So uh, I worship means needs, I worship something. I need, it requires I worship God. And worship must include your heart, your mind, and your body. So your worship honors God. Worship is directed to God. So there's some songs that, you know, we sing that, that, you know, during a worship service that might be songs that are just really there to encourage and build our faith. Where They're not really worship songs. They're songs that are encouraging and building our faith. So sometimes you need to, you know, just be aware of that. Some songs are just declarations of faith. Uh, there's a song that, you know, I believe in God the Father. I believe in God the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, God three in one, you know, that's a declaration of our faith. That's not really a worship song. Um, worship always costs us something. It costs us our time, our pride, our energy. Worship in the Bible is a sacrifice. Worship requires involvement. It requires you to be engaged. And when I'm talking about worship, I'm not talking about just uh, a in a church service. I'm talking about in your whole life. True worship isn't forced. Um, it's not when a worship leader or a pastor is pushing you to participate. That's not worship. Worship comes from your heart. Wor true worship is never half-hearted. True worship is open to God, adoring God, and waiting for God. True worship is done for the glory of God. In 1 Corinthians 10.31, it says, So whatever you uh, eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. And how we worship should not be determined by our culture or our religious tradition but by the Bible. So we're almost done with this session, but just a trivia note to close this session. Um, prior to the Reformation, the worship of the church was slowly transferred from the people to the clergy. So the clergy were uh, in charge of it and the audience just became, or the congregation just became the audience. So um, it was something worship 
quote unquote worship was something that was done for the congregation instead of for the Lord. And one of the main thrusts of the reformers was to return the act of worship to the people. So the people were actually worshiping the Lord as a congregation. So that's an interesting ditty. <laughs> Next time, we're going to talk about worshiping in spirit and in truth. And we're going to talk about the worst worship leader in history. We're going to talk about vain worship. And we're going to talk about the wonderful attributes of God. You know, if we think about how wonderful God is and all of his wonderful attributes, it's hard not to worship him. All Every time you think about him and his wonderful attributes, just, you know, be so thankful and so adoring and so in love with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit, that you just can't help worship him and, and just worship just flow out of your heart. And so... Um, I'll just leave you with that and look forward to next Friday when we talk about these things. God bless you. Bye-bye.